let's talk about Git internals. In this video, I want to show you how Git stores data, how its internal representation looks like, so we can get an idea of how Git works under the hood. One of the main concepts of Git is the Git object database. As you can see, it is located under this .git slash objects directory, and it has these four types of object it can store. The blob, the tree, the comet, and the tag. So this is what an object looks like. First, we have a header and the contents of the object. With the contents, you calculate the SHA-1 value of it, and you get this 20-digit uh, ID that effectively uniquely represents this object inside of Git. Also, we sealed and compressed every object before it is written to disk. So when you read the object, you need to decompress it to read the contents of the full object. One thing to note is that with the same contents, I can always recreate this SHA-1 value. So effectively get its content addressable. Now let's talk about the blob. The blob is basically the contents of a file. If you think of Git as a file system, the blob is the file. So Git stores just the data of this file, let's say, not the file name, not the file mode, or the permissions, just the contents. Uh, first, we need to store this header that says this object is a blob, then the size of the contents, this, then this null terminator that separates the header from the contents, and then the effective contents of this file. As you can see, if two files happen to have the same contents, even if they have different names, Git will only store it once because the contents are the same and so the SHA-1 value is the same. Now, the tree is the equivalent to a directory inside of this Git file system. And so as you can see, you have this first the tree, then the size, this is the same header as uh, the blob, but it says tree instead. Well, a tree is composed of a list of blobs or a list of trees. So you can see this recursive definition right here. So if you were to look at the contents of a tree, it will look something like this. Here's an example. You can see that we have the file contents of this blob object, which is a file called readme.md, and the SHA-1 value, which is the key of this uh, particular object. Then you have the tree here, that says stuff, so it's a directory called stuff. This is basically the same as doing ls inside of Linux, so this is what a tree looks like. Okay, now the comet. The comet is like a pointer to a tree, so we are pointing to a directory, and also a pointer to the parent of this current comet. This allows to create what we call the git history, because we know which comet preceded us. So as, uh, as this comet, you know, well, my parents are, for example, comet number one, the initial comet, and I'm the second comet. Uh, then you have the author, the commenter, and the message. So let's look at this example comet. We have the tree we're pointed to with this hash value, the parent with this other hash value, the author, which is John, and the commenter, which is Jack. And as you can see, the message is first comet. You can also see the dates of this comet. Now, the final object is the tag. The tag is basically a shorthand name for another Git object. So you can, for example, tag comets and say, OK, this comet is b1.0. So the contents of a tag are just the object you're tagging to, the tag itself, the tagger, and the message. So here is an example tag. It has this object. Uh, with this SHA-1 value, it is of type comet, the tag is b1.0, the tagger is John, and as you can see, the message is version 1.0. Now let's go to the terminal and see how this looks like in real life. Let's do a git init. Well, we initialized a repo, so we have this dot git directory. If we were to look at it, we will see that it has uh, for example, branches, hooks, the head file. It has this info directory, this objects directory, refs. But let's look at the objects. Now it's empty because we have no objects yet into our repository. But let's uh, create a file, for example, called readme.md and say hello there. Now let's save it. Now we can see that this file is ready to be staged. 
So let's add this file. Okay, now we have the file into our staging area. So let's comment this file. First comment is the message. And now we created this comment. So as you may know, we need to have a tree, a blob, and obviously a comment. Now let's look at the objects directory. And as we can see, we have first two characters of the Shawan value of an object and then the remaining 18. This is done for every object. Now let's cut, for example, some object here. As we can see, it's sealed compressed, so we cannot see the contents this easily. Let's do a sealed flight of this particular object. Let's just do this. So now that this object is uncompressed, we can see that it says tree, then the byte size of the contents, which are 37 bytes, and then we have the contents of the tree. It is kind of difficult to read because the show one value, it's in here. Let's do a hex, a hex dump. And we can see that we have tree 37 null terminator here. As you can see, then we have this file mode, readme.md, and then there is this null terminator and then the SHA-1 value, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. This 20 bytes is the SHA-1 value. So this SHA-1 value basically represents the SHA-1 value of the readme.md file. Let's show it in a more friendly way. Undo a cut file. So as you can see, this is what the tree looks like. You have uh, this readme.md blob here with this SHA-1 value. And if I were to look at the SHA-1 value, Inside of the object is this content that says hello there. Let's do a git log so we can see the history and we can get the hash value of the comet. Now let's do the same for the comet. And as we can see here, we have the contents of the comet. It says the tree is this hash one value. I am the author, I am the commenter. And this is the first comment. So let's do a bit more and add a directory called stuff. Let's uh, create a file inside of stuff that says, for example, new content.txt. And let's say new content 103, 123. So let's add stuff to the staging area and commit it. Second commit. Uh, okay, now let's look at this commit. And we have the contents of the second commit. And as you can see, it points to this tree and the parent commit is this SHA-1 value. So if I were to look at the parent comet, it is obviously my first comet. So now you can see it creates this history, this directed acyclic graph, if you want to get nerdy. It is directed because you're pointing from this commit to this commit, and it is acyclic because it can be some, the same comet cannot reference itself. So this is why it's not acyclic. So I want to show you that if we see this tree, this tree of the second comet, you'll see that we have the new structure that says readme.md and stuff. Something that it is important to note, it's that this blob is the same as it was before in our first comet. It's not a new blob, it's the same blob because it didn't change. And let's make this experiment and copy the same we have in the readme.md 
and go to, let's say, same contents.txt. Doesn't matter if it's not the same content. It's not the same file extension, sorry. So now we have the same content into this same contents txt. Uh, let's do this third commit. And now I want to see what it looks like. This is our third commit. And if we look at the tree, now we have this same contents.txt with the same SHA-1 value of readme.md. If you look at it, it's exactly the same. And this is because the contents are the same. So Git doesn't need to recreate another object because it is the same contents. So this is pretty inter interesting and it may surprise you if you didn't think about how Git works. So, I hope you liked the video. I just wanted to show you what Git looks like under the hood, just a bit of how data is stored. Uh, we didn't get into more details like how branches work, what is the head file, what is the staging area, what is the working area. Uh, we didn't explore much of it because I wanted to keep it simple, but if you want to see more, please, uh, let it in the comments if you want to comment and let a like if you like this content. Uh, that's all. Thank you.